Today we're going to take a look at GitLab. Now, uh, hopefully you already know what GitLab is because we're not going to really explain it in the course of this video. Um, we're also going to do one thing here that I do not recommend anyone does, which is manually configure the DNS by changing the host file. Uh, normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm frankly being lazy and I've only set up the one VM for this, so I don't have a DNS server separately or domain set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter it into the host file. And like I said, do not do this in a production environment, uh, but if you know, you're know you following along in your own test lab, sure, go ahead, why not? Now with that big disclaimer put aside, let's just check that we can now resolve my new domain name. Um, and we're able to basically proceed from here. The other prerequisite, and hopefully you've followed along from earlier videos, is I do have Docker installed already. So the intention here is to run a GitLab Docker images. So in this case, we are just going to quickly check the version of Docker we have. And as you can see, it's version 19, which is as current as they get currently. Um, obviously, if you're watching this video in the future, then that might no longer be true. So we've got a straightforward uh, request to build the Docker container, which is just going to use the previously mentioned uh, DNS name, in this case, my.lab.net. So we're going to go ahead and do a pull request, or in this case, it's found that the image basically doesn't exist, and therefore is going to do a pull request from Docker Hub. And once that's pulled down, we're going to go through the basic configuration steps that's necessary. Now, the other thing you will note here is that the volume has been used. So we're mapping the Docker container files to our local file system. Uh, that's very important because it means that if our Docker uh, container gets deleted, but the file system remains, we don't lose our data. So please do make note of those that you should always have the volume mapped if you want to maintain persistent data. Now the other key thing to mention here is I don't have a full mapping of ports as an example I do not have email in this container so there's no um, SMTP port but there is uh, in this case SSH um, and also HTTP and HTTPS although we're not going to go through the process of setting up HTTPS at this particular moment. So for the purpose of this exercise, I know that it does take kind of a while for the container to start up, even though it's a container. Uh, this is probably due to the configuration that runs the first time, because it doesn't seem to take that long the second or third time. So we're just going to go ahead here and uh, check the status that the container is running, and we're going to use the watch command. Now, since I do know that it does take a while, and we're going to wait until it says healthy, um, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up this video so that you don't sit through the, I think it's about two and a half minutes that it took for it to start up. So from this point of view, you're just going to fast forward through the video editing magic. Now, once your container is started, you'll be able to log into it using the previously mentioned fully qualified domain name. But if it's not yet ready, which is something I did want to show here, um, you'll see you can either get a, a message here where it's just simply not available or a uh, 502 which means it's kind of partly there but it's not quite fully started yet so as you can see we're, we're just going to wait for the healthy status to appear and then we can proceed now since we have a healthy status let's check to see if our login page loads and it does so we can now go ahead and uh, set the first time password and register our first user and see how that will actually look. So it's a straightforward process from this point of view. I'm going to choose not to save the password uh, just because you know, I, I never save the password in the browser, to be perfectly honest. I'm more of a KeePass fan. Anyway, uh, since this is our first user, we're just going to go ahead and register. Uh, this is a straightforward process. And that keep in mind, though, that when you're registering this, the registration user name is also going to be used as part of the lab uh, project name. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So here if we go ahead and I'm going to not save the password again and I'm just going to simply uh, go ahead and create a new project for a moment. 
Um, and as you can see, all the, all the other buttons are there and stuff. Just want to make it absolutely certain. So once we go ahead and create a new project, um, all we need to do really is give it a name. But you can also see that from the project path, it's kind of defaulted to using the username than the project name. So when you're registering the user, if you wanted to give it something company-wise or other particular name that you want to use as that URL string, um, then that's realistically something you need to think about when you're registering so that you can do that right off the bat rather than having this kind of username that might be a person and then later they're not there and then that gets all kind of funky. Anyway, um, there are plenty of project templates and we won't go into that because frankly if you want to go into those levels you'll be watching probably a different type of video. This was just to show how you can quickly get started with GitLab um, using a Docker image and how quick and easy it is realistically to set up. I mean, we're here at like five minutes and I'm blathering because we've run out of things to talk about. So that's how easy it is. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.